Welcome to the Valve Studio for April 9th, 2016. When I was at that estate sale a couple weeks ago, I uh, went out into the garage and was looking through all the miscellaneous tools and boxes of junk and, you know, drawers of stuff. And, uh, and I found one of these, an iron core inductor. It's a little guy, also known as a choke. We're going to go over today uh, some... Uh, some uh, where these chokes are used, um, our various options for measuring uh, one of these chokes, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about lab equipment, and we are going to go into some theory, uh, look at some numerical analysis using complex numbers, um, and uh, Python's uh, complex math library. Then we're going to run a circuit through simulation. We're going to look and see what results we should expect to get. Then we're going to get over here on the bench and use some really common test equipment to, uh, to measure this choke. So let's get started. The most common place for a choke to be used is in a power supply. I pulled up a schematic here for a fender baseman. Here's the uh, power transformer and the rectifier here. It's a goes over here to the main filter capacitor and actually there's two of them in a series uh, going to ground and here's that choke right here so the uh, the screen voltage is actually filtered from this choke and this cap capacitor right here then there's an RC filter right here that goes over to the uh, plates of the uh, phase inverter and then here's the uh, final um, RC network that adds additional filtering for the mixer itself. I mean the uh, preamplifier. So you'll most commonly find them right here. I did search through a lot of schematics for guitar amplifiers looking for one with a choke and you need to get into what some of the bigger amplifiers because uh, back in the day uh, the, this was an expensive part as well as these transformers themselves. So you don't find this often in guitar amplifiers but you do find it in uh, and hi-fi audio amplifiers. There are various ways to actually determine the inductance of this uh, inductor here. Uh, the first is actually look up the part number. Um, this one's so old that I couldn't find anything on it. Next approach is to use a bridge. Um, I have two of these bridges. I have one that's pretty old, like it's a general radio from the, probably the 50s. And then I have another one that's from the 70s, a little bit newer. Uh, universal bridge from HP. I have those I have those next door in my uh, development lab. I'm not going to use those today. You can use an LCR meter. Um, I, I have a, a really cheap knockoff here that's an Arduino thing. Um, uh, I'm not going to use that either. The, uh, another, the next approach is to use uh, this unknown induction inductor in, in a filter an RL filter. So you can either make a low pass or high pass filter. And if you know the value of the resistance, you can uh, measure the 3 dB frequency of your filter and they determine the, uh, the, uh, the inductance of this inductor. Uh, we're not gonna do that either. A uh, more common approach is to use a tank circuit. The tank circuit uses a capacitor of a known value and this unknown inductor value. And, um, you you create a tank circuit which is where there uh, the two devices are in parallel so at low frequencies the capacitor is open and the inductor is closed and at high frequencies the inductor is open and the capacitor is closed so a tank circuit typically is using bandpass filters we can get a very sharp um, bandpass and those are used as a, in uh, in receivers to do tuning, they'll use a um, they'll use a tank circuit. I have a um, little discussion on on one of these links here for the RL network as well as the tank circuit. I measured the uh, resistance of this inductor. It came out to be about 384 ohms, and that's pretty large. And what um, when you have that much resistance in the inductor itself, it actually shifts the um, the the center frequency of the tank itself so it's a tank circuit is a little bit problematic for large inductors like this however a series rlc network is not uh, impacted by 
the, the equivalent resistance of this, res, of this inductor itself. So that's what we're going to do today. <clears throat> and there's two approaches to, to, um, to actually uh, exercising this RLC network. The first one is we could just hit it with a pulse and a pulse of energy. And the pulse of energy will cause the RLC network to ring. And it'll ring at this this uh, at the resonance frequency. And if you know the resonance frequency and you know the C, then you can calculate what L is. We're not going to do that either. <laughs> so let's go down and talk about the test equipment we're using today. I watched a show called The New Yankee Workshop, I don't know, when I was in college. And the first couple of seasons, Norm would come out, and uh, it was a woodworking show. And he'd come out and use n normal tools that you'd have access to in a... In a um, in your wood shop and so you learned a lot of tips and tricks from from a master who's been doing it for for a long time at some point season three or four norm started bringing in this real elaborate equipment that no one would ever be able to to afford or even get access to i remember he brought in a shaper and i was like who's gonna who's gonna use a shaper i lost interest in the show and i i have a lot of test equipment here but i want to keep it simple and so today i'm going to use my oscilloscope and a frequency generator and a resistor and a capacitor and my unknown inductor and we're going to measure what this is so, um, and we'll go ahead and get started with that now go ahead and uh, so uh, but before we actually use that equipment i forgot we're going to go over some theory here um, i'm going to derive the transfer function for this filter network that involves a resistor a capacitor and my inductor and then i'm going to do some numerical analysis like i said using python's complex math library and we're going to put all that in a python notebook so if you want to download this you can just download the python notebook right from github or you can run it through mybinder.org uh, we're going to fire up uh, um, lt spice and do a spice simulation to verify the uh, the equations that i actually derive and then eventually we're going to get over here on the bench and take some measurements and see what we actually end up getting. Okay, let's get started. All right, on this screen here, I'm uh, I'm actually running IPython from inside the uh, the GitHub repository for the Valve Studio. So if you click in here on simulations, you come over here to inductor measurements, and you can run the notch filter Python. So here's the circuit we're going to construct and talk about today. Here's the series resistance here. This is the capacitor of my known value. And then what's inside this box here is the, um, the inductor with the ideal inductor and its series resistance here. Um, if we go and uh, we're going to derive the transfer function for this using the, uh, using the impedance of all the devices. So if we go down this string here, um, this is just a straight voltage divider where we have this this element in series with this series element here. So this series element is represented by 1 over J omega C plus R sub L, which is this, uh, and plus J omega L. And that is all divided by the, the entire string here. So we get R sub S plus 1 over J omega C plus R L plus uh, J omega L. If you at resonance, the in, the reactants of the C and the L itself are equal. So if you use this equation and you and you rearrange and solve for uh, omega, um, <clears throat> you get the one over the square root of LC. So this 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 defines the uh, resonance frequency of the of this series uh, circuit here, where L is in inductance and C is capacitance. If we rearrange this for L, we get uh, L is equal to 1 over omega squared times C. Uh, omega is really equal to 2 pi F, where F is in hertz. So this is our final equation here. <clears throat> so what we need to do is to find, uh, if we need to find F at the resonance frequency. And um, we know what C is, so we can determine L. So down here, this might be interesting for you. You may not have seen this before. Uh, Python does have a complex math library. 
And what I'm doing here is I'm importing the phase and the pi function. And then out of math, I'm, <clears throat> I'm importing the degrees function and square root. Degrees takes radians and converts it into degrees. So here are my, here's my component values, R, S, C, L, um, R, L. Now, I don't know what L is in mine, but for this example, I'm using 10. We'll show you why I'm using that in a minute. And uh, here's the transfer function itself that calculates uh, VO, which is the output voltage as a function of frequency. So we're going to do a sweep of frequency here. Um, this section... This section here, I calculate these frequencies using um, uh, calculate logarithmic frequencies over the uh, over a range of frequencies, and then I create an empty um, an empty array. So what's going to happen down here is I cycle through frequencies, and um, I take the absolute value. Man. This value here, VO, is actually a complex number, and I'm going to take the absolute, the uh, the magnitude. Uh, the magnitude of it is just really the um, absolute value. In Python, absolute value of a complex number actually gives you the magnitude. So I'm going to, I'm basically going to cycle through all these frequencies, calculate the V out in as a complex number, and then I'm going to append them all together and create an array. And also down here, I'm going to actually look for this minimum. If you come up here and look at this circuit here, at low frequencies, this is an open and this is a short. So because it's an open, that means that VO is going to be equal to VI. At high frequencies, this is a short, the capacitors are short, but the inductor is open, so no current flows down here, so V out is also equal to VI. At resonance frequency, these these two components actually cancel each other out, and you're just left with RL. So now you have just a straight uh, voltage divider of RS and RL. And so the the frequency the plot of the frequency is going to start at one and go along and dip down, and it's going to rise back up again. And at at uh, high frequencies, it's going to be one again. So <clears throat> that's a not that's a notch filter. All right, so what I'm doing in this little section of code here is I'm actually looking for the notch, and then I'm going to plot it down below. So let's go ahead and down and look at what we got here. The blue line represents the the magnitude of my my uh, transfer function, and I got a I got a a uh, the null the lowest point is right here. And this green line is the phase of the complex output voltage. And so we start at one, we go down to resonance and we go back up and we're back at one again. This resonance frequency was found at, um, we expect it to be at 159.15 Hertz. We get this frequency from this equation right here that L is equal to one over two pi f squared times C. We calculated it using this equation here, this, this function. We calculated it at 157.07. This is not exactly the same as this because we didn't have enough frequency points in our graph. We didn't actually hit right on the minimum. We could change that, but it, would, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're close enough. 159 hertz is where this resonance frequency is. Okay, so taking let's now let's say that we let's say that we didn't know what the inductance value was but we did find this minimum frequency right here so we can use this this equation here which is l is equal to 1 over 2 pi f squared times c and we're going to calculate it here so this is we know the resonance frequency is 159, and we know that the capacitor value is a 0.1 micro Henry, microfarad capacitor. And we run it through this equation, and we come up with L is equal to 10. So this 10 um, is what we would expect out of our circuit. So what we're going to do experimentally is 
wire up this circuit here and we're going to sweep this frequency here and we're going to look at V out. We're going to find this dip. We're going to find the minimum of this dip and that's going to be our resonance frequency. Then we're going to use this equation here. L is equal to 1 over 2 pi F squared times C and we're going to calculate what L is. Okay, here's a spice um, simulation results. Here's my, this is my series resistance that's uh, that's in the inductor itself. We measured it at three, 384 ohms. I picked a 39K resistor here. Um, this resistor doesn't really matter that much because the resonance is a function of the C and, the, and this L. It's not a function of any of these resistances here. And so you can see from SPICE, we get a similar type of, of uh, curve. The reason why the shape of this dip is different is that this is logged over here and this graph up here is not. This is a straight linear graph. Otherwise, they'd be the same. All right. There's an interesting thing that I want to bring up here, um, which is the kind of the key to the whole piece. Finding the minimum right here you'll see in a, in a few minutes is kind of difficult because this is where the signal, if we look at this down here, we look at this signal down here, we're down 40 dB. With my old oscilloscope, looking at voltages that are this small is actually going to be kind of tricky. You'll see why in a minute. What we, what we can do though is look at the phase change because at residence, the the effective capacitor and the inductor are taken out of the circuit and you're left with a pure resistance and the voltage divider has zero phase change which brings it up to we need if we can find where it's zero phase shift between the input and the output we know we're at resonance that's what we're going to look for and this is a really easy thing to find is with that phase change the phase shift being zero. Okay, so let's go over to um, let's go over to the bench. Here's our circuit here. Here's the series uh, RLC network. This is going to form up a notch filter uh, at low frequencies. This is shorted, but this is open. At high frequencies, this is shorted, but this is open. So at low frequencies, the VN or V out is equal to VN because this is open. At high frequencies, V out equals VN because again, this is open. And in the middle, we get some kind of notch as we saw in the uh, numerical analysis as well as the simulation results. So I have my circuit wired up here. Here's my unknown inductor, which is this guy here. That's a combination of an, an ideal inductor and my resistance. Here's my capacitor here, and then here's my series resistance right here. I got uh, everything hooked up. I got my, my scope probes connected right here. So this is uh, channel one, and this is channel two. And uh, these, these signals here are actually running off of a speaker jack on the outside of my uh, integrated amplifier. What we're gonna do is uh, sweep VN and we're going to while we're looking at V out we're going to find the minimum and that's going to be our resonance frequency and from that we can calculate what L is. Here's the old HP uh, function generator that I have here on my bench. Uh, it's not a digital one so it's just got a regular dot knob and uh, you can see that this knob actually has very large uh, uh, very large grid and so it's not going to be very accurate to find the um, um, displaying the center frequency of my notch filter uh, so we're not going to use this today we could use it and we use the scope over here next to it to measure the frequency on the scope but we have a little better way of doing that today What I have here is an old Android tablet that I downloaded an app called PA Tone. And it's a frequency generator that actually uses the Android sound card. 
and I have it running into my uh, my stereo amplifier down here. What's nice about this is it has a wide range of with a slider, so you can easily sweep between frequencies. And then the knob here is a very fine control. You can see the frequency up above. And then it has some preset frequencies that you can set over here. Okay, and I can turn the right and left uh, channel on, on and off, and I can also turn, I can turn the sound off in, in general. I can do sine waves or square waves, which is uh, convenient for some other measurements. So I'm going to use this to find the frequency of um, resonance for my, um, my filter network. And I did do a calibration run of this frequency on my scope, and this is a very accurate reading here. So we, we need two things. We need two things. We need the frequency that it oscillates at and the capacitor value. And with that, if we find the resonance, we can determine the L, the inductance. I have my function generator set around a thousand hertz. I'm playing on the speakers. I'm going to go ahead and click it over to drive the circuit here. So you can kind of see the, the uh, signals here. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the amplitude on the amplifier. So we can see this a little bit better. Because when we hit the notch, we're going to be very low in signal and I want to be able to capture it on this scope. So what we're going to do is uh, lower the frequency while we're looking at the bottom trace. The top trace is my output and the bottom trace is the, the out, the, this is V in, this is V out. And I have the, um, I have the center of the, this and the, the bottom, the bottom half and the top half of the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, go down in frequency till we find the null. So you can kind of see the null is kind of right in there somewhere. Go ahead and turn this up a minute. And you can kind of see that we're getting some, um, we're not getting actually a very clean sine wave. This is a contribution from other frequencies um, going through my circuit here. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to sh I'll show you that how that changes. I'm going to change the frequency a little bit. So the question is, where is the minimum? It's somewhere around in here. Now here's the, the trick. Um, remember I was talking about the phase of the circuit. Phase of the circuit is the output actually is in phase with the, the, um, the input at resonance because the uh, reactances are equal to each other and they're basically taken out of the circuit. So we're left with a purely resistive voltage divider. So my trick is you put your scope on ground and you put the ground point right in the middle of your of your scope and then you turn it off and make sure your AC coupled so that your AC wave is actually centered on that line that you have. Then come in here like this and turn up the gain so that you're clip, you know, you're driving it off the screen. And the reason why you want to do that is that you can kind of see here this is the uh the output wave. Let me get my pointer here. Here's the output wave and here's the input and this the brighter one is the input wave. So what I'm going to do is uh, sweep this around until they're right on top of each other, right at the center and the center of the screen. Okay, so we're right about get a little drift. Okay, we're right about here. Okay, this frequency is 160.6. I'm gonna write that down. All right, so let me just kind of summarize here. At High frequencies, high frequencies were in phase. 
at low frequencies we're close to being in phase at the center at the center frequency of the resonance we are exactly in phase but as we sweep through here you'll see that we kind of move around here so find in the middle we're actually looking at the phase not just the amplitude here's our series resonance circuit we went in and found the resonance frequency that's the point at which the uh, capacitive and inductive reactants uh, cancel each other out and we're left with a purely resistive voltage divider at which point the phase shift between the input and output are equal to each other this corresponds to the uh, analysis that we determined there is a p there is a dip at which the resonance occurs and that dip is also where the uh, phase shift goes to zero we found that frequency to be 160.6 hertz our capacitor value is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor we're going to go ahead and execute this cell and that gives us out that the inductance value is 9.8 henrys i'm going to go in uh, next door and we will measure this on my syncor lc meter So I'm over in my development lab and I have uh, our mystery inductor connected up to my Syncor LC53, which is a, a uh, capacitor inductor analyzer. And its range on inductance is uh, 1 microhenry to 10 henry, so right on the edge of its measurement uh, range. So if we press this out, we're really on the edge of it. It's 9... 9970 millihenries which equates out to about 9.9 .9 henries well, this kind of verifies that our procedure using just an oscilloscope an audio amplifier and a tablet with a known value of capacitor and uh, using a series resonance circuit we're able to determine the value of that inductor So there you have it. We covered uh, ways to measure the uh, value of an unknown inductor. We could look up the part number, which we didn't have access to. We could have used a bridge. We could use the LCR meter. We could use an RL network. Uh, we could use a tank circuit. Uh, we could have used a series connection, which is what we ended up doing. I derived the uh, complex equation for the transfer function for our circuit. Then I used com uh, Python's complex math library and did some plots. And I verified those on, uh, on the LT Spice. Then I came over to the bench here and I showed you that uh, my frequency counter is not too accurate. So I really couldn't kind of hone in on the exact value of the, of the frequency. So I ended up using an Android tablet with a frequency generator built into it. And that ended up being very accurate. Uh, I used an audio amplifier to drive my circuit because the output impedance of the audio amplifier is very low. And I could get really good uh, uh, voltage um, drive into my circuit. Because <coughs> when we hit that notch, we ended up having a very small signal and my scope was having problems triggering on that. Well, that's about it for today. This is a 10 Henry choke. I will put it in my box of tricks and we'll use it in future projects. Thanks for watching. This is the... Uh, Valve Studio for April 9th, 2016.